The Viltrox 24mm f1.8 lens is probably one of the best value lenses that you can buy for a full frame camera. And that's not just because this lens can be had for under $400, it's also because the 24mm focal length is so extremely versatile. And when you add that to an f1.8 aperture, you've got an extremely versatile lens that is excellent in low light conditions. And one of my favorite uses of this lens is walk around style documentary video. And that's really because that 24 millimeter focal length is just about perfect for that. And 24 millimeters is the start of what is considered ultra wide angle lenses. So going from 24 millimeters down is ultra wide angle and going from 25 to 35 millimeters, that's considered wide angle. And once we get into that ultra wide angle focal range, what we're doing is we're getting a better ability to set the scene and show that we have a subject or something happening, but we're also able to take in the scene and show what's happening around sort of the person or the object or the focal point of the scene. This really allows us to tell a compelling story. So this works really well if we're sort of hiking or out in landscape with a big broad epic landscape or if we're in a busy city, something with a lot of tall buildings, or if we're sort of in a cathedral or a church or an indoor environment where we've got sort of a lot of the scene wrapping around us, this allows us to take all of that scene in. The other nice thing about 24 millimeters is, as opposed to sort of 20 or 18 millimeters, this is the beginning of what is ultra wide angle sort of photo and video. And what this means is you don't have to be quite as careful when you're getting pictures of people and worry about that distortion. The wider angle your lens is, the sort of the smaller number in millimeters your lens is, the more you really have to pay attention to how you use it and how close you get to say a person, person because you will distort their sort of facial features or body, what have you. So this lens at 24 millimeters does make it a little bit easier to take a flattering photo of a person or an object without distortion. Having said that, if you get close to someone, you can still use perspective distortion to create some really interesting images, whether you want their sort of head to look big or you want sort of their feet sticking out at you and you want their sort of body to look elongated and interesting, you still do have an element of perspective distortion when using this lens so you can kind of play with perspective distortion. But at 24 millimeters, it's kind of an easy all purpose lens. The other thing when we look at this as a video lens, 24 millimeters is generally a reasonable, reasonably stable focal length when you're out shooting video. That's because the wider the lens is, when you move it, the less of the actual image or the, or the actual framing of the image moves. So what that means is at 24 millimeters, this is a lot easier lens to walk around with and get stable video footage. It also means that if you have IBIS in your camera, it's not going to test that IBIS and end up with sort of wobbling corners. 24 millimeters is a focal length which IBIS in a camera can generally pretty comfortably stabilize. And if you need a little bit more tweaking, you can always do that in editing. I'd like to thank Viltrox for sending this lens out for the purpose of making this video, but because the lens was sent out to me, I didn't actually realize how cheap it was at the time of making the video. And it's even a little bit cheaper than what I thought. So I will put the best prices that I found in some links in the description down below. The other thing you're gonna find this lens extremely popular for is YouTube videos. And that's because at 24 millimeters, you're going to get sort of a middle of the waist or waist to the top of the head shot, but you're still gonna be able to reach out and hit record on your camera turning that on and off quite easily. The other thing that 24 millimeters does for you is it allows you to get close enough to the camera that if you're using an on-camera microphone for your audio, you're actually still getting reasonably clean audio. Not quite as good as if you had a sort of microphone boomed out of shot, just out of shot and closer to your face. That's gonna get you the best audio. But I know a lot of people wanna keep it simple and they just put the microphone on top of the camera. And if you got a microphone on top of the camera, you can reach out and touch the camera to hit record. You're actually going to get a bit better audio because it's quite close to you. The other focal length that's quite popular for YouTube is 35 millimeters. You're generally gonna have to have that a bit further away from you and you're gonna have poorer quality audio if you are using an on-camera microphone. When we compare sort of 24 millimeters and 35 millimeter focal lengths for YouTube videos, 
videos, what you find is most people say that 24 millimeters is a more conversational focal length where you feel closer and more intimate in the scene, sort of with the scene wrapping around the person and you're sort of right there with them, where 35 millimeters is a bit more if you were sort of um, teaching something or if you're, you're a bit further away from them. It's a bit more formal of look. So 24 millimeters is a more intimate, close, informal look, where 35 millimeters is a little bit more of a formal look, more of an authoritative teaching type look. So this 24 millimeters is an extremely popular focal length for YouTube videos. And this is about the cheapest way you're going to get it and be able to get that blurry background because that's the other thing this lens does for you with that f1.8 aperture it's going to allow you to blur out that background the other thing i really love this lens for is documentary style photography now this can be out with my family at a beach or traveling through a city it is a really nice wide angle without being a crazy wide angle so it gets you a fairly standard looking view without too much distortion but it does get a lot of the scene in. So it's also great for sort of environmental style portrait. So if you've got somebody and they're sort of a head to feet shot where you've got them and then the whole scene wrapping around them, if you keep them in the center of frame with this lens, you're not gonna get crazy distortion if you're far enough back like that. Now, if you do get close, you are going to get distortion and you might use that creatively and intentionally and certainly I do at times. But what I think is from a sort of documentary style photography point of view, this is just about a perfect focal length. And for me, I'm almost always for that documentary style photography shooting somewhere between sort of 24 millimeters and 35 millimeters. And one really great quality about this lens that I think is often overlooked is if you are using a camera that has crop sensor mode, or if you have crop sensor cameras that use the same mount, you're actually gonna be able to use this and get a 36 millimeter field of view. So now you've got a 36 millimeter f1.8. This is also a great documentary style focal length for photo and video. It's a little bit tighter. It allows you to isolate your subject a little bit and get less of the scene in, but it's also going to be a more flattering sort of focal length for taking photos and videos of people, maybe shooting more formal interviews or doing portraits. So. It's got a lot of versatility because at 24 millimeters, it's at the beginning of that sort of ultra wide angle lens category of lenses, which is really, really good for a number of things. But on a crop sensor camera or in crop sensor mode, now you're at 36 millimeters. And that's actually just the beginning of about the standard focal range. So now you've got still a versatile lens, but falling into a completely different category. So. This lens, if you've got crop sensor mode on your camera or crop sensor cameras in the same mount, really does serve sort of a double duty purpose. Now we should talk about image quality. And I think when you look at the image quality you're getting out of this lens at the price point, it, it punches well, well above its weight. Now, the image quality is not perfect, and I wouldn't even say it's comparable to something like Sony's 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. That's a $1,400 lens, it's $1,000 more. But I think what you're gonna find is if you use both of those lenses in a very similar scenario, and you get a compelling photo or you get a compelling video, no one is gonna think that the one on the $1,400 lens is that much better than the one at the under $400 lens. If you are talented enough to capture a moving image, whether that be photo or video, that is going to far exceed the subtle differences between these two lenses. And the most important common element of these two lenses is that 24 millimeter focal length and very similar field of view. Having said that, if we actually look at the sharpness and detail that this lens renders, particularly in the center of the image, it is excellent and it's actually not that far behind that G Master lens. It is very, very similar in head-to-head -head comparisons. Now, once you get out to the corners, you are getting a bit of darkening, you are getting sort of a little bit of smear. So at the corners, it's certainly not as sharp as that G Master lens, but it's not terrible either. It's perfectly usable. And I think as long as you're capturing a compelling image or a compelling video, nobody's gonna notice if your corners aren't quite as sharp from one lens to another. The other thing is as you stop this lens down, if you do wanna use it for sort of documentary style photography where you want everything in the background to be in focus, so you're shooting at sort of 5.6 or F8, 
those corners sharpen up and there's absolutely no problems whatsoever. It's only at f1.8 where you get a little bit of that softening in the corners. And even then, it's not too bad. Now, the one place this lens does exhibit some sort of interesting qualities is in distortion. It has this somewhat odd, wavy mustache style distortion, where if you're shooting a straight horizon or straight lines, you will definitely notice it. Now, if you are editing your photos in Lightroom or any of the popular programs, you actually can get the sort of lens profile correction that Bill Trucks offer on their website. You can download that and install that and it will take that out and it will look perfectly fine. Uh, but the other thing is you cannot correct that in video. Not quite as obvious in video because generally when you're moving around, it sort of takes that element out of it. You're not clinically looking at lines and looking if they're straight, but just something to be aware of. Probably the weakest point of the image quality coming out of this lens is its vignette. It has a very, very heavy vignette, particularly at f1.8. And even when you stop it down to sort of f5.6 or f8, it never entirely goes away. Now, this doesn't bother me too much because in my photos, I often add vignette back to the ones that actually don't have any vignette because I'm often trying to draw attention to the center of frame or my subject. So it doesn't bother me. In addition to that, because of the lens profile correction in programs like Lightroom, you can lighten up those corners and get rid of that vignette. So it is something you can deal with. Keeping in mind, if you are shooting video, you will have the vignette. The camera doesn't correct for the vignette in camera, so it is there. But once again, this is another element that can actually look quite cinematic. And there are even 10, 15, 20, even $50,000 cinema lenses which have significant vignette. So I wouldn't necessarily consider it the worst thing ever, but when we look at the optical, optical performance of this lens, we definitely notice a strong vignette. And regardless of how much you stop it down, it never really goes away. One place this lens really does excel is close-up image quality. Now, it only focuses as close as 30 centimeters, which isn't super close. If you have a crop sensor camera or use your crop camera in crop sensor mode, that is not gonna get you physically closer to the object, but it's gonna crop you in so that you are getting sort of a closer image of the object or a more zoomed in image of the object. But when you do do that, you have a lot of detail. So even though the fo close focus isn't super close, when you do get close, the detail is there and it's absolutely excellent. So I think you can use it for sort of detail photos, product photos, and things like that. It would be nice if it was a little bit closer, but for what it is, I think it's pretty good. When it comes to flare performance, I was absolutely shocked at how good this lens was. And that's because I've seen a few reviews just saying it wasn't very good and flaring was a problem. But when I tested this and compared it directly to some of my Sony and Canon lenses, I found it was pretty well on par. And if it was behind at all, it was just fractionally. You could barely tell the difference. So when it comes to flare performance, I think this lens performs on par with lenses that are two to three times the price. But if I were going to name my number one most outstanding thing about this lens as far as the optical performance goes, it's definitely the background blur. This thing renders the most magical, beautiful, smooth rendering of the background blur. And I find that this is fairly common through all of these Viltrox lenses, almost regardless of what system they're running in. And I don't know exactly why that is. My suspicion is that the lens technology and what they're using as far as the way they're engineering these lenses is a little bit more like vintage lenses than modern lenses. I mean, you still got all that sharpness and detail, but I know a lot of people use vintage lenses, particularly for the quality of their background blur. And what we find is a lot of modern lenses that are very, very sharp render some horrendously busy and awful background blur. Well, that's not the issue with this lens. It, it definitely renders some detail, particularly in the center of frame, but that background blur is just amazing and smooth and not distracting and really creates a beautiful backdrop for whatever you're focusing on and whatever subject that you've got in the frame. So absolutely my most outstanding optical feature of this lens is the background blur. Looking at the build quality, this is an all metal lens. It has a metal lens mount, a polished metal lens mount. It even has a USB-C port for updating the firmware. This is something you don't even get from many of the major manufacturers nowadays. So I think that's great. And Viltrox is really good at releasing new firmware, particularly sometimes new cameras come out and maybe the compatibility isn't as good as it is with some of the older cameras. 
cameras, they'll just release a firmware update and updating the firmware on these lenses is so easy. You just plug it into your camera, it recognizes it as a drive, and then you drag and drop the firmware onto the lens and then just automatically updates the firmware. It's actually kind of amazing. It's the easiest firmware update process of any lens by any manufacturer I've ever used. So I think that is an absolute no brainer. Now you've got that all metal body. You also have a D-clicked metal aperture ring. I do prefer a clicked aperture ring, but the D-clicked aperture ring at least has enough resistance so you won't bump it. This is a problem that I do find with some other lenses out there, but this is actually quite stiff and it is smooth. So if you're shooting a video and you want to change it while you are shooting your video, you can do that and you're not gonna hear the clicks. Now it has an ultra wide focus ring, which actually takes up most of the lens body and is super, super smooth and well dampened. And I found the performance of the manual focus in this lens was as good as any native mount lens. Now coming up to the top, it does come with a lens cap and lens hood. The lens hood is plastic. It feels fine, but it's nothing special. I don't think it feels any worse than anything by sort of Canon, Nikon, Sony, any of those. And then obviously it comes with the lens cap. The one thing that I will say about this lens, it does have a 55 millimeter filter thread, which is really nice because that's actually quite a small filter thread, which means if you want filters for it, they're pretty cheap. And I've got a UV filter on here. I've actually done a bit of research and I found the cheapest UV filter that doesn't render, render any sort of color cast or degrade the image at all. In addition to that, it protects the front of your lens. So if it gets scratched, you just add a new filter, take the filter off and add a new filter. So if you do pick up this lens, I do strongly recommend that you do get a lens filter for it. And I will put a link to the filter that I recommend in the description down below. Now, I think the obvious lens to compare this to is the 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master by Sony. That is a lens that costs a thousand dollars more. Now, a few things when we look at the comparison of this lens to that lens and optical performance. First of all, the sharpness and detail are fairly similar, particularly in the center of frame. The G Master is gonna give you better sharpness and detail at the corner, and it's gonna give you a little bit less vignette, but you're gonna get a very similar field of view between these two lenses, which means your images are going to look quite similar. I would say across the board when it comes to distortion, vignette, all of these things, even color rendering, you're gonna find that the Sony lens is just that little bit better, that little bit more accurate. But you are paying an extra thousand dollars for that lens. In fact, when you look at the Viltrox lenses for the same price that you could pay for that, you could almost buy a complete set of Viltrox lenses, including a 24, 35, 50, and 85, a series of four autofocus lenses covering everything you would need through an entire range of professional photography. And you would be able to buy that for only a little bit more than you would pay for the one Sony lens. So I think when it comes to price, this isn't even comparable. If you're looking at the Viltrox 24 millimeter F1.8, I think you should also be looking at the Sony 20 millimeter F1.8. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is my detailed review of that lens. And before you make your next lens purchase, I definitely think you should check out that video.